Saberites, welcome back. Uh, today we are going to go over the KR Sabers Maroc um, in super fine detail as to how you as disassemble, assemble, put your chassis in, absolutely everything. Uh, it's a warm day today, I have got the window open, uh, I've got a drink next to me, if I need to take an occasional breather I will. Um, right, let's dive into it. Christian Cruz designed this lovely box. It's a very big box. Okay, I'll save us both ends. Uh, which is really nice, really cool. Love it. Uh, I've been looking forward to this one for a long time. Uh, those who pre-ordered, uh, thank you for your pre-order. I'm sorry about the wait. The factory had a couple of delays. Um, nothing too serious, but obviously we wanted to bring this out sooner. I couldn't. Um, and those who haven't got it, do jump on it because there aren't that many. And this is the one where it functions correctly and it's all the correct colours and the right scale. So I initially designed the hilt and Roy from Wanawanga uh, scaled it to the right size, wasn't too far off in the first place. And then I broke down the engineering and here we have a folding hilt that has a few features in it. Right, 3M tape, we'll leave that right to the end. Um, I don't even think you need me to, uh, I'll show you a few, a few bits of it, but I'm not going to go through every single part. So we've got some ring decor pieces, uh, we've got a load of baggies on this side, so we've got a whole load of allen keys, really important, don't lose those, you're going to need all of them. Uh, we've got some brass plates to fit into the pockets, uh, we've got some more ring decor pieces. On this side we have the grills and the forks for the emitter. Uh, which you will just put a dab of glue on once you've finished your assembly, once you're happy with it, once you finish your weathering, then you can put them on. Uh, so that's nice and easy. And then two blade uh, reducers. So we thought, well I thought when we are doing this, uh, the uh, Spectre 5, the Shin and the uh, Loaf and Found all use 7 8 inch blades. The, the Balin, the Balin Skull Hilt, the KR Skull, uses a 1 inch. So, chances are some of you have 7 8 inch blades, so we included some reducers in case you haven't got two 1 inch blades or whatever you prefer, really, but they're there. So, you have that option. And then we have the main attraction here, which is the hilt. Get the big box out of the way. Now, I love Inquisitor hilts. They're so silly. Uh, <laughs> I, I love them so much uh, because there's always a bit of engineering involved to make them function correctly. And I want them to function correctly. I'll, obviously one day we'll get a spinning one. Uh, <laughs> this one here, I want it to fold correctly as well. So remove that. And here we have the main attraction. Now, before we go any further, this will require you to do a bit of disassembly. And when I say a bit, I mean a lot of disassembly. So you really do need to pay attention here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to break the hilt down to its basics and then reconstruct it for you. So you can see how it works and how you're going to clock and set everything. Now it should come mostly clocked, but I guarantee it's going to come loose because the factory never does anything uptight, uh, which I can't blame them for. Um, this is really loose, straight out of the box but it does fold to the 180. Uh, the ball catches, there are ball catches in here, but you have to set them up right. Uh, obviously the factory hasn't done the best job of setting those up right, because they're a bit loose at the moment. Um, but we'll run through that in uh, once we get down to the nitty gritty. Uh, right. Uh, this hilt has a really nice feature, and a really neat feature, because this has the uh, rotating mechanism here with the ball catches. You can't have a full slip out and slip out chassis because, well, uh, you, you will eliminate all the mechanism you need for this hilt to function nicely. So, um, we have a fixed chassis. Once you get it in there, it's fixed, but you have quick access to a recharge port and a kill switch, uh, which are the two most important things you need, when you, especially when you've got a fixed battery. So, and it's a 21700 battery as well, so it's not an 18650, it's going to last you a bit longer. All you have to do to gain access to the recharge port and the kill switch on the chassis is pull the trigger down and pull it back, and then you've got a little finger access down there. Uh, if you want board access, 
all you have to do is back out these four screws here and then this will slip back even further into another notched position so then for you to then gain access to your SD card and your board really simple so though it is a fixed chassis you have access to everything don't have to disassemble the hilt entirely um, and there's nothing too awkward inside in fact there isn't anything awkward inside so designing your own chassis if you want to do that is actually quite simple uh, there's not many things protruding into the id that was the idea behind this we make it a nice big install space because this is a you know not the thinnest hill in the world it's not the fattest either um, but you, there's plenty of potential in here for big batteries multiple speakers multiple boards so on and so forth enough of my blabber let's get on to disassembly so first thing I'm going to do is I am going to remove the fixed ring. So I'm going to grab all the Allen keys. Now I've been told why don't you use a really nice pair of sets of Allen keys? Well not everybody has a nice set of Allen keys. So I will always try and use what is included with the kit or equivalent of what is provided in the kit. So 1.5mm Allen key. This will be your absolute friend on this. Remove these screws here. I wish I removed the blade plugs first, but we'll get to that just after removing all of this stuff here. So there is quite a bit. There's a bit of screws everywhere on this hilt, which are actually a bit of a godsend, really. Uh, so when there's screws on the outside of the hilt, it makes my job a lot easier because um, I don't have to try and hide the screws. Uh, equally, I have to use the same size screws that are shown on the prop. Right, there we go. I'm going to stick this off over here. Oh no, my screws popped out of the holes. Don't want to lose those screws. I'm going to try and keep them in the same holes. There we go. Right, be careful how I put that down. All right, uh, shall we remove those blade plugs? Get your fastest Allen key. So if you're using the one inch blade, you've got two positions of blade retention. If you're using the seven eighth inch blade, one of those is used to retain the holder and another one goes through to retain your blade. And everything's a bit squeaky at the moment. Uh, I have got some tips as to what to use uh, to also help your mechanism last. Not that I think it will wear out, but you want it to run nice and smooth anyway. Right, so blade plugs removed. Next step is to remove the rotating ring. Uh, is it 1.5? Yep, 1.5 millimeter iron key again. And then once we've reassembled all of this, we will go through the features of the rotating ring as to how you can uh, lock it down in the closed or open position and you how you can open it up so it can rotate between the 180 degree points uh, without having to lock it down if you don't want to. That's another thing. I didn't want you to have to remove screws to then rotate it and put it back together. I wanted to have a proper good mechanism in here and that's what we've got. But in order to have that, it requires a little bit of attention from you guys. So I'm going to keep that in that orientation. Try and remember the trigger is to the left hand side of myself uh, with the buttons there as well. Cool. Now. Uh, we come to an interesting part. What I'm going to do next is fully remove the collar screws. Stick them over there. Like so. So now these can do a full 360 and you can tell the ball catches are not engaging on those whatsoever because they haven't been set at all. Right, one thing I'll show you now is inside here, 
are some grub screws. I'm gonna get right close and personal. See if you can see them. I'm not sure if you can see them, but there's some grub screws internally in here, just up here. They are also helping holding the clocking mechanism, so I can fit one in now and turn it if I wanted to. I'm going to leave it tight for the moment, just for the moment. So those are kind of a backup set of grub screws for the clocking mechanism. What we're going to do now is we're going to uh, remove the emitter unit, which will just grip onto this bit here, just below the rotating collar. Grip onto that and unscrew that. And it will reveal the collar and the emitter, like so. Uh, and so, if for any reason you weren't happy with your orientation of that when it was assembled, not only can you remove this collar here, which also clamps down the whole unit onto there, but you can also adjust the grub screw. So if I wanted to tune it a little bit, I'd undo the two internal. You might have one. It depends on what's available through the window, uh, but that's all it needs. Just undo that. Undo that. And you can see the bush is already coming out like so. And then what I'll do if I want to make sure it is clocked correctly is symbol the string onto there, uh, put this through there, thread it all together without looking down the lock collar. So do it up like it's a separate unit and then get your clocking right by threading this down into your position, your desired position, making sure everything's done up super tight. So I'm going to say it's about there. Rotate this collar down. Yeah, nice. Yeah, so that's the position I want. And then I will go back inside and just nip up those scrub screws from the inside. And I'll make sure that that collar and that emitter are nice and clocked for the rest of the assembly and stay that way. You don't go overly tight, you just nip them up. And that's that. Right, so now we can leave that bush and that lock collar in position. Just remove the emitter. And do remember, this is how it lines up. Okay, that to the trigger. which is secretly your latch for your access to your boards and your recharge port and your kill switch. Put that off to the side. Okay, now for this side, um, not as strenuous. This here, this little lip here is a lockdown collar. And if you undo that, this whole unit will slip out. You do that up nice and tight into the right position that you want and then that's all good to go. So, now we are in this position here where we have the main body, plungers, and everything good to go there. Here, this is a really simple one to clock. Just push in, get to the right position and thread that down. This one now is in a good position. We know it's clocked, so it's just a case of threading that down. What we want to do now is gain access to the rotating collar, like so. We'll take this collar off here, like that. And then I'll show you the ball catchers. Now I've forgotten which, I think it's the same key. The second from largest, You have these wonderful ball catches. I love them. They exert quite a bit of force. Can't even 
I'm pushing down on my finger now. Bends my finger now. <laughs> so pretty cool. But one thing you'll need now is a tissue. Light thread lock, light thread lock. Not the red stuff, not the green stuff, not the blue stuff. Purple is the lightest and a little bit of grease. Now, so I have this Abbey silicon gun grease for my airsoft stuff, um, but whatever clear light lubrication you have, that's a kind of a gel form, not a liquid form, because um, you're going to be super, you're not going to be spreading it all over the place, only a little dab here and there. All right, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to lubricate I'm going to remove the uh, all grub screws first like so and I'll do the same for the other side as well So that one more. There we go. Right. All I'm going to recommend you do is you get a little bit on your finger. I'm not even talking a lot. You know, you can barely see it. Just go over the front face here, the back face here and round the inside of it as well. I'm gonna add a little bit more to the inside, that's more important. And I'll do the same to this one as well. And this will just help your mechanism run a bit smoother. Now, that's enough grease. If you've got any on the outside diameter you want to get rid of, just remove that off quickly with a bit of tissue, a bit of kitchen roll. So as I say, make sure it's a grease, not uh, a lubricant. And don't use WD-40, that's not a lubricant. Cool, good position. Next step is to apply a tiny amount of thread lock. Now, I want to stress something first before I go ahead and apply any thread lock. These ball screws, ball spring loaded ball grub screws, have a little lip right here that the ball subtracts into. I haven't, I can't even mimic it. You want to make sure that that lip, the solid lip, that's part of the threaded part of the grub screw, does not protrude any further out beyond here, behind, beyond here. Okay, so you only want the ball to protrude out. So you're going to have to pay attention and watch very closely to what you are going to do. And you're only going to use a little bit of uh, thread lock, tiny amount. Okay, if you're coating it, then you're going to have issues. All right, I'm right handed, so this is technically easier for me. All right, you see that? That's the only amount that I'm going to put on here. And I'm going to thread it in. Now I'm going to keep an eye as to where the ball is. I'm going to say, so I'm going to take it a bit further so I can see the lip and then subtract it. So I can't see the lip. There. I don't know if you can see that or not. If you can see the ball and no lip, you are in a good position. And then I'm just going to do the same for the bottom one. 
if the lip sticks out and you thread locked it in place, it's going to grind. Which is not what you want. The good thing about the light stuff, a bit of force will help get it undone. Or if you've applied a lot of it, a little bit of heat. I think that'll do. Just gonna leave those to sit for a little bit, let that thread lock set in, and we'll move on to the next one. I'm not actually right-handed, I'm a bit ambidextrous, so sometimes I forget which way I'm meant to be holding things. Which hand is my steady hand? Not my strong hand. <laughs> my steady hand. Now, I know I'm kind of taking this off camera as I'm doing it, but I need to make sure I set this right. Double check and see if I can move those forward a bit further. Nothing wrong with checking. Going back and having a quick look before anything is set. dropping it. So it is small, it is fiddly. And make sure you put these in in the right direction as well. So you want the ball side of the ball plungers to be on the tall side of this holder here. to do is go too far and then retract it back. Cool. Double check that again. Uh, if you're if you're getting this installed and you're not confident as to what you're doing, your installer who wires cables up to profi boards, CFXs and everything, they should be more than capable of doing this kind of easy stuff. So easy for them. So don't stress. Right, I'm kind of done with the thread lock now. Ugh. Right. <laughs> Whilst we're here, shall we stick a chassis inside? So here I have a wired 21700 battery. So loads of battery energy there. Uh, two 22 millimeter speakers here. Stock fin neck PCB at the bottom and at the top. Three switches here, two profi boards, one side with a recharge port, one side with a kill switch. There is an alternate version to the chassis that uses one profi board or one board in general and one 28mm speaker. Um, I saw there's potential for uh, the profi board eventually going to be able to handle two blades at once, as in control them independently which will be fun and exciting. I'm looking forward to that, but at the moment, since it can't, I've got two uh, Profi boards. I've got two V2s. I'm mostly gonna use this for the red blade anyway, nothing complicated. And I've got three switches here. So what I've chosen to do is to make the blade that emits from this side is gonna be my primary blade. So that has a two button setup, and the one that comes out of the bottom here will have a single button setup. Obviously you don't have to stick to that, you can do whatever combination of the buttons you want. You can have the front button to be uh, operate on one button system and that's all it needs to be and the same for the back side or you can swap them around or do whatever combination you like. 
that's the thing. Check with your installer as to what they plan to, to do before you send it to them or give it or when they're just about to do it and make sure you get what you want. The kind of button setup you desire if you've got, especially you've got two boards. If you've got three boards, uh, three boards, one board and three switches, you can do whatever combination you like with that as well. Excuse me, excuse me for a moment. All right, bit of lubrication. So, one thing you want to do is when you put this in, you do not want to have the buttons compressed. Another thing you're going to run into straight away is when you try and put this in, is you can't get it in. <laughs> uh, what you're going to want to do is retract some screws. And so, there is hidden sound venting on this and actually hidden, not, not just gaps in this because that takes away from the accuracy. There is some, there's a small gap underneath this bush here, but running all the way around here, which is a sound vent. One's picking up now. Oh, I've dropped a screw, never mind. I always put it back in. Da, 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 da. Just a couple of threads. Notice I'm checking the ins inside here to see if anything's protruding. And then you're going to want to back these ones out as well. What you'll notice is when you back these ones out, you'll gain access to the free notch system. Now I can't remember. Yes, it should. So you can do that. Then if you fully remove them, these front four, you have gained access, further access, to the inside of your chassis. So that's the first notch, there's the second notch, opened up all the way. Close that back up, make sure your fingers aren't on the buttons, and slide your chassis in. Check. Excellent, getting some nice tactile feedback on all three of the switches, which is beautiful. And then what I like to do now is tighten that one up, not too hard, tighten that one up. Uh, they press slightly onto the chassis just to hold it in place, reduce any wobble, which is nice. You can see here, not moving. And then I'm going to put these ones back here. Obviously, when you come to put down the brass plates with your 3M tape or super glue if you so desire, um, you will have to remove the screws to do so. I'm not putting these down all the way. And the good thing is, what we're doing right now is we're giving that, time, that thread lock time to set and do what it needs to do. And this is already feeling, with that 21700 in there, two boards and two speakers, it's already feeling like a good weighty hilt. I like a bit of weight to my hilt. Right. That's another good thing, I forgot that I did that. Uh, if you do these up all the way nice and tight, it'll grip onto the chassis underneath and then you it won't move up and down. So if you want to gain access, not that this slips by any means, but if you want to gain access, um, keep those not fully tightened down on the chassis. But if you want to make sure this doesn't move whatsoever, uh, tighten them down all the way and it'll, give, it'll add that little bit of grip onto the chassis. But that's pretty neat, you can see here. 
got access to the kill switch. And my lighting is terrible. Look at that. Come on, focus. Come on, lighting. Got access to my 1.3 millimeter recharge port. Notice uh, this is a 1.3 millimeter recharge port. Um, on the single board version, it takes the standard 2.1 millimeter recharge port. So, uh, and both you can gain access with the cables, no problem at all. That's really, really neat. Happy with that. Right. Let's do this side first, since we're confident with the clocking. What we're going to do is slip this on, push it down, and rotate it. And I can feel the ball catches are working really nice now. And then we're going to thread this down because we've already set the clocking with this. Make sure you catch the threads. And you can see we're already starting to get ahead of it with the install side of things and how close we are having this finished. Oh yes. Yes. Yes, that's what we love. <laughs> that's what I love. I love the ball catchers doing what they're meant to. So that's really neat. Really cool. Clocked lovely. And then we'll do the same for this side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slip this down, thread this up just a little bit, not all the way. And then grab my rotating collar. Make sure you put it on the right way, not this way. Okay, you want it to be tall side of the holder near the emitter. and thread this on as well. Holding on to this bush here. Sometimes I forget I've got a camera in front of me, so I'm just doing it for myself. And then that's nice and tight. And then you can still freely rotate this as you need to. Uh, and then we are going to tighten it down with this collar here. process this bit but once you're happy with it it's set and you don't have to come back to it cool right that's really neat I actually love the hilt just as this <laughs> without the rings I think it looks amazing um, so clocking is set now Noise and both of the rotating collars are making use of the grease and the ball, a spring loaded ball grub screws that we've put in and thread locks in position. So they're functioning really well. Next step is if you're doing your install, you will get two of these prints with your chassis. Uh, they're universal between both chassis types. Um, that use short pin MS PCBs and the stock fin neck PCBs. Um, one thing you want to do. So out of these two grub screw, uh, screw, screw positions here and here, uh, where the fixed blade attaches, the back one actually has a PCB retention screw, PCB holder retention screw in it. So I'm going to make sure that's backed out all the way. I can see that sticking out there. I'm going to do the same for this side. Lovely. So I'm making sure that those are completely clear from what we're about to do next. Now, you drop down your emitter PCB holder. If you can find the position. I'm going to have to just look at this off screen for a moment. Do excuse me. Right, I 
got one down there, pushing down on the outside lip of the PCB holder. I then tighten up the scrub screw here until I meet a little bit of resistance and give it a quick nip. Just remember you're pinching into print, not metal or anything else. So don't go too nuts and do the same for this side as well. Grand, push down on the outer lip, tighten up the grub screw until you feel it pinch up, little nip, and hopefully everything's okay. We'll know if smoke starts pouring out of it. Working lovely. Uh, so there's hidden sound venting here and here. Uh, the idea of having the speakers pointing opposite to each other is that if you have speakers pointing at each other, what you're doing is cancelling out the sound and distorting your sound and ruining your sound and actually quietening it more. This is very hard hill to get good sound, sound venting out of just because of the design of the hills itself. But what we've got here is pretty nice. I'm quite happy with that. Those are 22 millimeter speakers. The uh, single board chassis takes a 28 millimeter speaker, uh, which is rather lovely. I'm not sure when the property board is going to be eventually capable of handling two blades at the same time if you require two separate speakers. Um, that will be fun. Oh, grub screw, um, grub screw, and key down here somewhere. There we go. Just going to tighten up that one there. Oh, all those. There we go. Right. So, uh, I'm going to go over another trick with you that this holds. So, grab your 1.5 millimeter Allen key. Grab the screws that go back into the collar here. Let's tighten them down all the way. And if you've set this up correctly, they will go quite a bit sub flush. The heads will go quite a bit sub flush to the outer diameter of the rotating collars. 37 minutes, blimey. Uh, which hopefully you can see here. But if you, so now those are locked. You can't rotate them. Those are really locked. But if you back them out a little bit, only a little bit, you can now rotate your collars. And note, they will not go beyond the 180. They firmly click into the 180 position and firmly click back as well, which is really nice. It's gonna be a lot easier to do it with the ring on it because you have more leverage. Really cool, right? Now I'll show that a bit better once we've got the rings back on. Oh. Whenever you get the grease on your fingers, you never really get rid of it until you wash your hands. Okay, so let's get that ring back on, shall we? Nice, fits in nicely. Grab that 1.5 mm millimeter Allen key and do up the screws. What I recommend is you don't go super nuts with these. Um, have you ever come across uh, an Allen key screw that when it's done up super tight and you can't get it back out again, you really struggle because the Allen key, the way the hex shape itself is designed for rounding off. <laughs> so I never go super nuts with any screw that requires an Allen key to do up. There we go. See, locks in, locks in, really nice. Ah, twist that. Got to remember that. Should I hit the kill switch for the moment? So we can avoid that happening. <laughs> I'm going to rotate that round and I'm going to put this ring back on with the Allen keys, with the same Allen key and the grub screws, grub screws, countersink screws that have stayed in position. Not 
doing any of them up super tight just yet. Just get them down, get the threads caught. Not nipping up anything just yet. Great thing is, this also helps with the alignment of everything. And then I'm going to go back over, do everything up nice and tight. Remember what I said about not being too tight though, because of it's just an Allen key. And then we should have our finished hilt. And you see it locks in, lovely, look at that, beautiful. All right, that's our fully installed Maroc hilt. So just another side note, I recommend not pressing the buttons when you're pulling that down. Hang on, turn down the sensitivity. <laughs> One of them. There we have it. Look at that. Lovely. I've been waiting for a long time for this one. Love it. Love it a lot. Alright, uh, so I'm not going to explain how to put the brass pieces on. Uh, I recommend a good pair of tweezers as you're doing all of that. There's plenty of spares on this sheet if you need it. Um, one thing I'm going to cover is a mistake I made and I take responsibility for. Uh, and it's not a big problem at the end of the day because I thought it would work one way and it does work that way but it might not appear as common sense to a lot of people as well. These ones here, obviously you've got quite a few of them here. You will find that you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You've got a spare there. These, half of these will go onto these and half of these will go onto these first. Um, just in case, because they're all pointing the same direction. They're not half and half. So I'll, I'll show that a bit better now by putting one on one of the panels. If it peels off nicely, it might not peel my pearl off at all. Okay. Oh. Okay. Kind of didn't peel off very well at all. I'll show you anyway. But that's the side for the moment. So say you're going to put this one on here, which you can do just like so, and then peel it off. I know and it's only got half on it, I'm going to go back through and get the other half in a moment. That will go on here, but won't go on here. Now since they're all pointing, all the stickers are pointing the same way, right? If you put them all onto these parts here, you're going to go, well, I've only got half that actually fit. <laughs> so what you want to do is put half onto the panels, put those half panels in position, like so, then the other half like so peeling very well from the premium side of things. And then the other half you want to put into here first. Okay, and then peel the non-sticky side off and put in your panel. All right, so please take note of that. Don't go ahead sticking all of these onto these then putting them in because you'll find that then you're stuck with half that won't go in. Uh, as with a lot of Sabre stuff, I recommend you get a roll of 
freehand tape and scissors anyway. Um, there's plenty of spaces in here as well for picking out, uh, cutting out your own little bits and bobs if you want to as well. So you don't have to use all of these. Um, you can cut out your own if you want to. There's loads in here for all the little bits and bobs as well. So yeah, there's plenty of spares in there. So just be careful of that. Don't go putting your free end tape on all of these, put half on those, half, and then put those in position, then put the rest onto the rings themselves and stick them down. Right, uh, is there anything else I need to cover? Ah, these bits here. I'll just run through it super quick, because the video is long enough as it is. What you want to do, after you've weathered it, or you've sent it off for weathering, or they're gonna do it, whatever the method is, if you're gonna keep it clean, doesn't matter. Put a dab of glue on here, slip this in like so, get it lined up straight, and then put the dab of glue on this side and this side, and put that in like so. And you can see it actually fits in rather nicely anyway. Um, so you're not gonna have to hold it down. It's designed to fit in its pocket like so and then you glue it together and then it's all good to go. So that's that. Uh, and the reducers. I mean, I'm not sure if I need to explain it, but I'll explain it anyway. If you've got seven eight inch plate. It's on which way around it goes. help if I actually pull out the grub screws a little bit more. I think it's this way around. Ah. There we go. Is that lining up? So make sure you get it the right way, James. Line up your holes. Yeah. So you stick it in this way, like so. And then your hand key. That one there should be to grip onto the sleeve and then this one should pass through into the ID to help retain your seven eighth inch blade. There we go. Right. How cool is that? And then if you uh, reduce, if you pull these screws out even more, you'll pull them out of the tracks You should be able to go like this but if you only pull them out a little bit so push them all back in and back out a little bit all back in back out a little bit then you're making use of the grub screws and you can't fold it that way anymore and then like so look at that oh I love it I love inquisitor hilt really fun a big challenge for me to engineer cool solutions but love them right so i'm going to end the video here and i'm going to get busy putting 3m tape all over this and getting all the panels in place thanks very much guys i'll catch you in the next video hit like and subscribe i'm sorry for the length of the video catch you later